Welcome everyone, I am the Data Lord, and this is the DeepMind 12 intro. Uh, Behringer has in the past been known for making really uh, affordable products that may not quite have the same build quality as uh, more expensive things like, you know, Mackie. But with, with, with these uh, synthesizers, they're turning over a new leaf. These are, these are good. These are seriously impressive since they're they're built super sturdy. This thing is is you know rock solid, and uh, the oscillators in it sound beautiful. Uh, today I'm going to be going through the different uh, f you know routing of signal and explaining how we make a basic patch in this, and uh, we'll continue making more videos showing how to make different sounds for you know, your house music and your trance, your dubstep, your uh, funk, whatever genres you're into, we're going to be making specific patches for it. And also, if you don't own a DeepMind, um, these concepts will work on VSTs, they'll work on uh, other hardware synths too, as long as they have these same uh, basic subtractive oscillators and, and filters. Uh, so. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So with the DeepMind, um, if you want to reset your DeepMind to factory, uh, just so we have an absolute blank patch, hold down Program, and then quickly press Compare. So Program, Compare. And we get this nice uh, little saw wave sound. And... Uh, So this sounds nothing special, but let's go through the oscillator uh, one, oscillator two, and, and see what options we have to kind of start crafting our sound. So if you're new to synthesis, an oscillator is a component that will develop uh, a sound wave. So we have a sound wave in the shape of a, of a sawtooth right now. Uh, if we want a you know perfectly clean saw, we can turn off this pulse module this pulse width modulation button and we just have our sawtooth on. Now with just our sawtooth on that's what we get. If we have just this just the pulse width modulation square wave on. Get this nice clean little uh, square wave. Now if we were to pull this pulse width modulation up. You can see on this uh, panel right here, maybe you can't, um, but it, it, it's showing the nice uh, square waves and how it's thinning the space between the square waves. And um, if we were to turn up the pitch mod, um, that will make the sound unstable. It, it's basically a pitch LFO. It's a pitch LFO that will bring the pitch up and down, up and down, and it will bring it more and more up and down the further out the um, the pitch mod uh, slider goes. So, for example, controlled by LFO 1. So if we crank up LFO 1's rate. Uh, you kind of have this funny little, this little whipping sound. But if you crank it up, it kind of gets into frequency modulation territory. So it's not uh, really meant to be used like that. 
So that's the pitch mod. Um, I personally don't use it very often, but I'm going to play it around with it more for, for risers, sounds like that. So let's build a patch out of a sawtooth, shall we? Um, so we have... Sounds nice. Let's get into our oscillator 2. Um, we're going to push the level up. You can hear the other oscillator. Uh, the pitch level, um, it goes up two octaves. Then all the way up. Sounds pretty good. Uh, now, we have this tone mood, which just kind of adds more of a, a metallic top end to the sound. Uh, I'll show you that with the pitch down a little bit. adds like pulse width modulation on whatever sound you have but it really just adds some presence to the top end uh, pretty interesting uh, pretty interesting and then we also have uh, pitch mod so If you put LFO1 onto the pitch mod, and then you put the pitch mod up just a little bit, it moves it so fast, it moves the oscillator's pitch so fast, that it gets this nice uh, super saw sound. So... We also have a, you know, let's get. We so right now we have oscillator one as a saw. We have oscillator two as a uh, saw that's pitched up two octaves. So, and then we also have this nice noise oscillator. So if we turn noise all the way up. Nice clean white noise. And it's really useful because you can uh, really add some uh, fill into your sounds. So I'm going to have this up just, just where you can barely hear it, right? That's good. So that's our oscillators. Now, oscillators get put. Uh, through amplitude, and amplitude is handled by an envelope. So over here, um, we have our VCA, which is voltage controlled amplitude, and we can, if this is selected, um, the attack, decay, sustain, and release over here in the envelopes, they now apply to volume. So as you can hear, I'll turn all these down. So if I if I pull decay down, so it, yeah, if I have uh, sustain all the way down and then I start pulling decay down, I get more of a pluck if, it, if, if the decay is down around uh, a fourth of the way up. So. And then, 
let's go ahead and push the stain up just a little bit so that there's still some sound at the end of the pluck. And then let's put a little bit of a, of a release on it. I found the release is helpful right above um, 5, so we have 0, 5, and 10. If you put it right at 5, um, you get a useful tail, but it's not overpowering. So. That's good. Um, now, over here we have another button, this VCF. Uh, this stands for Voltage Controlled Filter. So, what this will do is allow us to apply uh, this envelope to filters. Now, before I get into that, I'm going to go over here to filters and we're going to explain filters a little bit. So, filters, um, on, on, on this we have a low pass filter and a high pass filter. So a low pass filter will let the low frequencies pass through and as we open up the low pass filter we'll get more high frequencies in our in our sound. So for example, so right now we have just sub bass, you can barely hear it. I'll pull this frequency up which is also called a cutoff. Most synths have a filter cutoff. You can hear right here, you can hear the mids, but you can't really hear the top end. Now if I keep pulling it up, you can hear the top end, right? Now if I uh, pull this high pass filter up right here, um, right now we just have high frequencies. It filtered out all the low and the mids. Right. Now pull this high pass filter down a little bit. In, we have no bass, but we do have some mids. And then pull this three fourths of the way down. And then all the way down. And we have all of our, our bass back. So uh, you can use a high pass in tandem with this uh, voltage controlled filter to kind of get rid of some of the lows and get rid of some of the highs, and you have more of a, a band. That's just the mids, right? So you can, you can shape your sound there. Now if you're, for whatever reason, trying to get the, the highs to really show up, but you still want to have some bottom end in your sound, um, there's this, this boost button right here on the high pass filter. Um, so with this uh, all the way up. So that's with the high pass filter all the way up. Now with the boost on. Can't hear much of a difference, but pull this down a little bit, boost off. And then boost on. You hear the bottom end right there. So, I I think what that does is it just allows more bleeding from the low end into the high pass filter. But uh, I have to look at a a spectrogram for it. Maybe that's a, a research video for another time. But uh, boost gives some bottom end to your high pass filter. So now uh, on these synths, we have frequency cutoff which is on this synth just called frequency, and we have resonance. And what resonance will do is at the point that the cutoff uh, is cutting off, what it will do is it'll add a bit of a peak to that, that frequency section that's being cut off. So uh, we can emphasize that specific spot. So for example, So it's not the most uh, useful sound, right? But um, if we were if we were to be really low, that's kind of how you get the, the tom kind of sounds. So you can get percussion sounds out of using a resonance, but uh, we'll make some patches in the future that kind of have that acid uh, 303 kind of sound, and we'll use a lot of uh, resonance uh, to, to play with those filters, but for this sound we're not going to use resonance, um, maybe just a little bit, but uh, let, let's get into using the envelopes on this filter. So if we press this VCF button right here, these envelope ADSR now apply to the, the filter. So 
Now, um, these buttons right here, this uh, ENV, LFO, and keyboard, um, the envelope, which is the one we're going to do now, it, it says how much of this envelope is going to apply to the frequency uh, at a time. So, for example, let's uh, put this up all the way and pull our frequency down a lot. Uh, about three-fourths of the way. So that sound, um, pull our attack, our decay, our sustain, and release down to kind of reset them. We'll pull our decay up and start pulling it down a little bit. So now we have that pluck sound, right? So like That's pretty useful. That's a that's a bass sound for a lot of house genres and even for um, all kinds of EDM. We use that for like the you know the, those those upper you know plucks that we would have emphasized a, a hook. Hip hop uses it a lot. Snoop Dogg kind of songs. You know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, with chords, we can get more use out of this by pulling the sustain up just a little bit. And uh, that's good, but I kind of wanted to pull more. So we have this curves button right here in the corner. So if we press curves and it lights up, the ADSR now applies to how much tension. So if, if, if it's like this, if we pull the tension down, it'll kind of become like that or like this, right? Um, so, so we can, in effect, get more of a dump, dump or more of a Dum, dum. It changes the, the curve of the sound, right? So, it's a bit more snappy. So we're going to go back to voltage controlled filter, but we're going to turn curves off again. And let's dial this uh, decay. It's more of a really snappy, right? Very good. And... Uh, so we have a, a good sound, but in order to get this to kind of go where we want it to, we have to modulate some things. Now, if we pull our filter up now. Now, if we want the bottom of our frequency cutoff to sound more like this, then uh, you just pull this envelope down. And, and basically, what it will do is say, at whatever point the envelope slider is at, the envelope itself, the ADSR, will apply to the frequency at that level. So if we have the envelope all the way up, then it starts the shape of the envelope at the top of the frequency. But if we pull the envelope down, then it'll start the envelope at the cutoff being at the same level as the envelope. Um, 
So uh, it affects how, how loud the envelope affects the shape of your filter uh, with each key press. So uh, it's useful, you can kind of make your sounds more snappy or more dull. Um, a lot of times you, you, know, you want that dynamic range so you can build some drama into your tracks. So right now we have, and pull the frequency down. Put the decay up just a little bit. A little bit more. No, I'm sorry. Envelope up. Envelope up a bit more. So now frequency all the way down. That's good. Because that still has a bit of a pluck to it, but it's not too much, right? Very good. So let's go ahead and let's get into some of the options we have with our polyphony. So we have this poly slider right here, and it is so, so handy. Um, right now it's not going to do anything because I don't have it on. This edit button at the bottom of the poly, if you press that, it brings up a menu. And under polyphony, um, we can select, you know, using the yes and no buttons here, um, we can select whether we just want it to be, you know, one set of oscillator, or I'm sorry, one voice per note press. Or we can have it do two voices per note press. Now what's cool is once that's enabled, once the unison's on, this unison detune will detune those oscillators a little bit down or a little bit up in order to give them some spread so that they actually start to phase with each other, which uh, gives you this kind of a sound. See how fat that, that became? Now we're getting into that trans area. Now if we um, bring that up a little bit more. It's just to get really detuned and uh, almost into some of that. You know, almost into a lead kind of sound or happy hardcore, you know, something kind of in, in that vein. Now you can get it really broken and I think this would really only be used for effects or if you're making a, a really dramatic track that's just supposed to sound tense. It's so all the way up. It starts to really lose its musicality. But I could see how you could use it if, if you're um, like as like a riser or something to build tension. Because remember, a lot of dance music is all a matter of setting a mood and creating tension and then just releasing it all at once and people get really excited because they, they had all this tension from the you know riser and uh, that kind of drama, we really have a lot of options to make the sounds tell the story we're hoping them to tell. So we can get uh, two. voices per button, or I'm sorry, per key, or three. Now, I, I will say if you're going to use chords, a lot of times you'll have one note in the bass and then three notes to create a three note chord in a higher register. That's four key presses, and if you have three unisons on, that's 12 oscillators being used, um, I'm sorry, 12 voices being used on those two oscillators at the same time. So over here you see voices. That's um, how many of these uh, voices are being used at any one time. You'll notice it skips around. Uh, it evenly distributes the amount of work to different oscillators or different voices. And what's nice about that is you actually end up getting 
more variation because it's switching around. But if you notice, we have one key being pressed. We have three of these lighting up, which means we have unison set to three. So if I press two notes, you see six. If I press three notes, So, something to keep in mind if you're going to be doing big chords, unison 3 is the most you should go to, but if you're going to be doing lead sounds, um, you can crank that all the way up to all 12. But you're, you can just press one key at a time. Um, now... If you're going to get into these lead sounds, we have this porto button over here, porto knob over here. This portamento will create slides. So if I twist this up, crank it all the way up. So it really activates when you have two notes pressed at the same time. So, uh, you know, Benny Benassi is where that sound really became uh, used heavily. That portamento was nasty. sounds so we're gonna keep this at three because we're trying to get kind of a progressive pluck so unison you know, detune down about quarter you kind of want to play notes you know play chords and, and tweak the the dial because the uh, sound will be by ear every time so we have that really feeling right where we want it uh, I'm going to add a little bit of noise to it more. 